Today's video is a continuation of last week's video where I confess a skincare scene. I never wash my face in the morning. And then I got this question from one of you asking, and what about oily skin and acne prone skin? Does this also apply or should oily skin wash in the morning? That's the question I'm going to answer today. Hi, my name is Custodio. I work for 30 years in the cosmetic industry, the last 12 years in product development, and here at The Age Traveler, I try to shake up ideas, see if they stand, and try to build this idea of a skincare, which is asking, what is that skin wanted just before marketing got in the way? And before anything, if you've seen this channel before, you might be realizing that the setup entirely changed. This is probably an exceptional situation. I just had to transfer camera and uh, some elements to the office. And then I thought, why not to do a YouTube video in a break, five, 10 minutes from the working schedule and do it at the Swiss line office where we are. So still in Zurich as always before, but not shooting from home, shooting from the training conference room where I'm alone. So it's still just the two of us and it's still not only about Swiss line, it's about everything and nothing depending on the inspiration. But I think it's about something. So let's answer the first question. And in case you haven't seen the previous video, I will link it here. This is a video in a nutshell, in case you haven't seen, I confess that for the last 20 years, I never washed my face in the morning because I prefer instead of a tensioactive, so a detergent or an emulsifying milk or oil in the morning, I prefer to do an exciting skincare mask. And I believe that this is the best way to go for skin because skin doesn't need this washing every morning, every morning and can benefit much more from the various effects of good, exciting skincare masks. So in a way, the question about oily skin already carries the answer because oily skin has the characteristic to have excessive sebum. So of course, that excessive sebum must be removed and should be removed. But the same golden rule applies. We should remove excessive sebum, we should not remove all sebum, because sebum is skin's own defense uh, shield on the surface. I know it sounds dreadful, sebum, just the word, if you have an oily skin, it's enough to make you cringe. I know because I have an oily skin, I grew up with acne uh, during my teenage times, and I know how sensitive you can become just thinking about sebum. Why do I still believe masks can be your friends in the morning, even more so when you have an oily skin prone to acne? Because a misunderstanding we have often at large in the industry is that the only problem for oily skin is the quantity of sebum. And actually, if we think skin biology, acne comes not only from a quantitative increase in sebum, but a qualitative decrease in sebum. Meaning that you have a lot of sebum, but a sebum of a very poor quality. Exactly because it's excessive, it degrades, it oxidizes, it harbors bacteria growth, pathogenics, which will actually just alter more and more the quality of the sebum. So thinking that the mission, only mission in skincare is to strip all that away from the skin and have simply a cleansing effect, it will mean a boomerang effect. So it's a rebound, your skin will produce more and more sebum because make note of this, oily skin doesn't know it is oily. Oily skin will still react to overstripping, producing more and more sebum. So working on the quality of our sebum, working with ingredients which cannot really activate in a cleanser, a cleanser which washes off after 30 seconds, cannot deliver the same skincare benefits of a well-formulated mask. So as a conclusion, my answer is yes, 
I agree that cleansing morning and night for an oily skin prone to acne might be positive, but at the same time, I come back to what I believe, which is the morning time, a thin layer, 5-10 minutes, as opposed to a thick layer once or twice a week for 20 minutes. It's the way to go also for oily skin. And I want to give you very practical advice what you should avoid often formulated as being masks for oily skin, we have some mistakes where you're gonna waste your money and you're gonna be fooled. First one, it's clay masks universe. Clay masks can go under this name, very, very different textures and formulations. I tend to detest pure clay. Whenever clay, it's more of a rough ingredient. It's a hell of a thing to rinse off and to remove. And there is nothing an acne prone skin will uh, suffer more than you fight the mask, you fight the skin to rinse it off. So when you think clay, it might be even written clay, in the ingredient list you should look for kaolin or kaolin. Kaolin will still have these absorbing qualities of the clay, but it will have none of the abrasive uh, effect of the clay that dries out too much to a thick film on the surface and it's not easy often to remove with water. So masks which are not easy to rinse off are a no-go for oily skin. I would not go anything with particles, anything which physically scrubs the skin, which is also the case often products addressing oily skin to have that mechanical additional exfoliation and when I talk about my favorite masks you will see over and over enzymes which help to digest the dead cells and unclog the pores BHA, AHA so you can do more into the chemical exfoliation route and none of the mechanical exfoliation and exactly the masks I'm picking are the ones that even if you wake up with some inflammation, some pimples and some unpleasant, often painful uh, imperfections uh, that go under the name acne. Uh, the masks I'm talking about, they are actually nurturing, healing and helping to diminish, not to aggravate those inflammations. So the first one, it's my beautiful uh, AquaPure enzymatic mask from Swiss Line. So we're here in the office. I'm sure there are many enzymatic masks here, but there are also always an enzymatic mask with me home because this is one of the softest, softest ways to go. So you can actually have these enzymatic exfoliation, papain um, and enzymes from probiotics, uh, enzymes from pumpkin. So all these enzymes which help to digest, digest, quote unquote, and speed up the natural exfoliation without any AHA or BHA. Because we do have a lot of those in serums and other specific formulas, we also wanted to have a mask and maybe you are looking for an exfoliating mask without grains, without AHA, this would be one option, purely enzymatic exfoliation. I also mentioned in my video from Biologique Recherche Mask Vivante, I said I even have a picture to show with the mask just to make fool of myself. This mask which doesn't have a pleasant scent, but it works wonderfully to calm down, to heal and to make the pH more acidic because having a more acidic pH, it's an additional level to fight bacteria. The bad bacteria don't like acidic pH. And now specifically geared towards acne prone skin, I would mention uh, Dr. Pericone Chlorophyll Detox Mask, a mask which shares with uh, my Swiss line formula, the papain, the brumlain, so those enzymes which help to digest cells, but also the chlorophyll which backs up the detox type of idea. I mentioned before, I don't think detox is all the way uh, set in stone a claim I believe in, because I don't think skin is part of that much of a detox for the body, but nevertheless we talk about absorbing excess excessive oil, uh, draining um, excess sebum and helping skin to be cleaner and cleaner together with a very healing, very calming effect as well. If you want chemical exfoliation with AHA and BHA, you have SkinCeuticals, 
the clarifying uh, clay mask. So clay mask in the name, but kaolin in the ingredient list. So the softest, the good kind of clay that you should go for. So this is absorbing, exfoliating at the same time. So also a safe way to go. And of course, if you create, as I did for myself, what I call the wardrobe of masks, then all year around, you can play around a little bit and fine tune exactly to the moment of your skin. What's the best texture? What's the best feeling? And to close, the most surprising, one of my favorite masks when it comes to real acneic skin because it brings the classic ingredient sulfur to add to the wardrobe. None of the masks I mentioned before contain sulfur, which is a classic ingredient to curb acneic, uh, pro-inflammatory cascades. Why do I like Eradicate from Kate Somerville? I like it because you also have a self-foaming bubbling type of effect, which is coming from perfluorodecalin, an ingredient, an oxygen carrier I mentioned before, which traps oxygen in bubbles. So this self-foaming effect that you see, I'm showing the texture in the picture, has nothing to do with soap, it's actually a bit of a fizzy type of effect together with the sulfur and a handful of oats which are perfect for baby skin and calming. So that's why this mask, I think it's a good way to go for acne because at the same time sulfur is really a hammer to kill inflammation. You have the oats which are very calming and soothing. So in an ideal world, if your budget can afford all these masks, they will last the whole year, you use a very thin layer, and not only you say no to boring skincare, but little by little, you can say no to acne without saying no to skin, because there is no aggression. To kill your acne, always think that you should not kill your skin. So say no to everything which is killing your skin and follow the H Traveler as always. See you next time, probably from home, with bird noise as usual on the background. Ciao! So I just said it, I'm saying it again. Please click down below, send questions. If you haven't subscribed the channel, what the hell are you waiting for?